Hi friends, one of my subscribers asked to elaborate more on the topic of CT and MRIs and their detrimental effect to our health. In particular, he wants to know about cancerogenic effect. In order to do so, we need to talk about ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation is um, re represented here on this on this graph, and it probably creates the most damage. So, CAT scans are most damaging in sense in sense of cancerogenic effect on our body. They will follow by X rays, ultraviolet tanning baths, endoscopy, thermographic imaging, and then MRI. MRI will create the list of the cancer. Now, let's talk more about MRI, by the way, is only, the reason it uh, does not create that much effect because it's non-ionizing radiation. It's basically a huge magnetic field. So let's start talking about CT imaging. Here on the left, you can see how much radiation per person will get from different devices. The lowest radiation gets from dental x-ray. And during the full body scan, person get about 10 millisieverts of radiation. So I wrote here, in generally, person get more than 10. And I will talk about that in a second. Keep in mind that Japanese survive, survivors receive between 5 to 20 MSV during the event. Now, why do I say in general and why nobody can tell you exactly how much person get radiation during the CT scanning? There are four reasons for that. Number one, it depends on the equipment. There are CT spiral, beam, and dual. Number two, type of the procedure is important. Here on the left, you can see a different types of the procedure. For example, CT of the head get only two MSVs of radiation. However, the whole body CT will get 20 or more. Here again, we have this word more. Why more? It's, ex it's explained in number three. The size of the body is important and the, how six slices are need to be made in order to look inside of that uh, organ. So let me show you here on the example. You are looking at this apple. An apple represents the organ in this case. Suppose organ is small and you need make only, let's say three slices in order to look inside the organ. One, two, and let's say three here. So three size, three, three slices. So person will get that much radiation. One, two, three. However, you can see that this slice is too thick to look inside. Suppose there is a small tumor bigger than five millimeters there. So I need to see what's going on inside. So I need to add slices. Let's add a couple more slices here. One, two, and here, three, and here also. Now you can see how many slices I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three and seven, big difference. With every additional slice, person get additional radiation. I hope this example um, clarifies for you how the big organ and the size of the slice mm -hmm. is very important. So let's go back to our point point. Now, number four, different organs have different sensitivities to radiation. The most sensitive organ to radiation is a bone marrow. And per, people that get exposed to radiation, they usually get a blood cancer. Now, that's why I used to tell my students when I teach in naturopathic medical school, there are strict indications for CT. Number one, acute head injury, hemorrhage, um, 
stones in the urinary tract, acute trauma to spine. And here is number five is acute appendicitis. I don't like this because before doctors had CT scans, uh, acute appendicitis was successfully diagnosed with uh, our own hands, then laboratory work, and then we had x-rays. So between those three, you can actually diagnose appendicitis very well. On the right, you see a picture or chart that represents, did you get a low dose of radiation? You will get with mammogram, moderate dose of radiation and with uh, uh, CAT scan and uh, abdominal CAT scan, you will get pretty high dose. And it's all compared how much radiation you get during the radon exposure per year. Now into MRIs, totally different animal. It does not involve radiation. What it does, it maps the water. Water in our body has a polarity. Here you're looking at the picture of the water. It has oxygen and hydrogen. And ions and electrons are spinning around. Okay? So, and water molecules on this picture locate randomly in our body. So one is looking in this direction, the other looking in that direction, so then he looks in that and that. And once when you put MRI magnetic field around the body, what happened, MRI scanner has 60,000 times stronger magnetic field than magnetic field of the earth. What happened to these molecules of the water? They become reoriented, they align with the MRI field. Look at that, what happened. Now, this movement between here and there creates electricity in the body. This electricity measure it and then transformed through the computers into an image. So you can see here in MRI, all molecules run or, or, or line right up straight, okay? So we know from um, our life that magnetic fields do contribute to cancer formation. For example, power lines definitely contribute. We know they contribute to leukemia, childhood leukemia, brain cancer, and the breast cancer. However, there is not much research on this topic. Why? Because the field of MRIs is moving too fast. So the research, the government research, double blind, independent, placebo control studies just cannot catch up with that. However, there is a contrast that injected during the MRI and we definitely know that it creates uh, problems with the kidney and uh, inflammation in the brain. So how it contributes to cancer, not much research. In the link, uh, in the description below, I posted one epidemiological study uh, that says, yes, it does. So, but what I am personally interested in, because it is such a strong magnetic field, how it affects magnetic field, not only the body as a whole, but individual organs. For example, we know well that heart has, it creates electricity, right? We determine that it has, and we are looking how well heart works by looking on electrocardiogram. So here you can see electrocardiogram of the heart. Here on the right, you're looking at the picture of individual cell. Blue is a extracellular space. Inside the cell, we have a totally different environment. Cations, anions, water. So, and between those two spaces, there is a cellular membrane. It's a lipid bilayer. When we create this massive electromagnetic field around the body, it will, have, it will affect water. It will affect the sodium, potassium, chloride, onion. What happened to them? We don't know how permeable become that cellular membrane and long-term the damage to that cellular membrane during the event. There is not much research on this topic, so, but I'm interested to know more about that. So let's say a few words about um, how to prevent damaging effect from uh, CT 
um, uh, scanning. Number one, high doses of vitamin C. I wrote here, per bowel tolerance. Some people can tolerate five grams, some people can tolerate 10, 15. The, the tolerance is at which, how many grams you can take without having a diarrhea. Okay, so, and this is example of vitamin C. You can take five uh, milligrams of melatonin before bedtime. Fish oil is recommended to people who are uh, planning uh, MRI. Keep in mind that fish oil has a side effect. If person, old person, tend to be unstable on their feet and tend to fall, it will prolong actually uh, bleeding. So uh, keep in mind if that's, if that's your case, so maybe the fish oil is not the right way to go for you. If you have any questions, guys, ask me here. Please like, subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye-bye for now.